Before we get into today's video, I'd just like to draw your guys' attention to my vest top here. It is a band vest top from my band Wooden Elephants for our new album Strings and Hammers which you can see here. If you guys are interested in getting one of these vest tops or it also comes in t-shirt form, you can get them from T-Mill. The link is below this video. They are made from 100% responsibly sourced cotton here in the UK. If you would like a CD, you can get them direct from us. Just send us a message and you can also get a digital copy from Bandcamp. The link is below. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. On this channel, we post writing tips, unboxings, book hauls, book reviews, and the occasional vlog. And today I have another book review for you, and we are going deep into Robin Comfort Zone. Today we are reviewing The Devil in the Marshall Sea by Antonia Hodgson. Before we get into that review today, don't forget if you like what you see, just subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to see as soon as I upload, click that little bell down below. Your continued support means a lot, so thank you guys so much. All right, this book is a historical fiction murder mystery. It's pretty awesome. Before we get into this review, I will read you guys the blurb. London, 1727, and Tom Hawkins is in trouble. The wayward son of a country parson, his taste for wine, women, and cards has led him in irons to the notorious Marshall Sea, a debtor's prison. The Marshall Sea is a dark and dangerous place at the best of times, but when an inmate is brutally murdered, the prison is soon gripped by fear and suspicion. Worst of all, Tom is sharing a cell with the prime suspect. Now he must risk everything to uncover the truth or be next to die. This book has so many good reviews on the back. It says historical fiction just doesn't get any better than this by Jeffrey Deaver. This really is something new in the world of historical fiction. At times, Hodgson even rivals Dickens, which is the Daily Express. A damned good read, Elizabeth Costova, author of The Historian. The pace is relentless, absolutely superb, which is from Crime Review. And on the front as well, we have The Daily Mail, a riveting historical thriller, brilliant by The Times. Truly spellbinding from The Guardian, utterly compelling, fiendishly plotted and dripping with atmosphere by Mark Billingham. So a lot of really good reviews on this book and I do agree with them. It's pretty damn good. At the beginning of this book, it does give you a brief historical note just to explain about the Marshall Sea Debts Prison. It was a real place, people were there and it did have a bit of a notorious background. As always, I will split this up for you guys. So we're gonna have spoiler free first, then I'll give you a spoiler warning and then we'll go into possibly some spoilers. You can skip on if you need to. Now, the first thing we're gonna discuss, prologue. If you've seen my channel before, you guys know how I feel about prologues. I don't generally like them. I tend to find that it's just a way to make a story more interesting if your first chapter isn't gripping enough. However, it does depend on what genre you're writing for, and I don't actually read that many murder mystery thrillers, but my partner Matt does. And he has said that a lot of the time they do have a prologue just to give you one piece of evidence so that you know what evidence you're looking for. For me, the prologue in this book does give you a really vital, important piece of evidence, but it didn't necessarily slow it down for me. It just meant I knew there was a murder coming, but, but then I knew that anyway from the blurb. I don't know. Prologues are personal opinions. I personally don't feel books generally need them, but there's a prologue. Now at the start, I did say this is completely in my Robin Comfort Zone type of read. I love historical fictions. Generally, fantasy that I read is historically based. It's my jam. And of course, like all good historical fictions, there's gotta be a character like good old Moll, which is an innkeeper. She knows all the blokes are afraid of her. She just runs the nest of thieves. There's always one. There has to be. Love Maul. Love that character type. I know it is a complete cliche in this type of fiction, but gotta love a good old Maul. So even though this is a historical fiction, I do find it does have quite a lot of really powerful and strong women. So you have good old Maul who runs the pub, who everyone's afraid of, she knows everyone, da 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 da. You also have Kitty. I'm not gonna tell you too much about Kitty because obviously she does play a vital role in this book, but she's very strong and very smart. We also have Mrs. Roberts, again, a strong woman. Her partner is the murdered victim in this mystery novel. And again, she's quite a strong widow she's got on with it, she has money, she's respected. Yes, there's a lot of flirting going on, there's a lot of male protagonists looking at the women, but they don't actually do anything to the women. Now, because this is so fast-paced, I didn't write down that many quotes, because it is just really, really gripping. Because it is in the Marshall Sea, it is a debtor's prison. Everyone in there has a motive to kill someone, everyone in there is desperate for money, so anyone could have killed 
the victim, which makes it really, really good and really gripping because you're just like, everyone could do it. Now, I'm gonna say spoiler alert just because I'm gonna say a few quotes, but they're from a bit later in the book. So if you haven't read this book and you don't want any spoilers, then skip to this time here for my overall view of the book. If you don't mind spoilers and you do wanna hear more, then stay tuned. But just a reminder, spoiler alert. All right, page 165. I adore the meeting between Hawkins and the ghost. In this part, Hawkins runs into the ghost of Captain Roberts, who is the murdered victim in this novel. And I just adore the dry humour here. I'll just read a bit to you guys. The ghost gave a wild shriek, avenge me. As you wish, I fold my arms. Tell me, who is it murdered you? The ghost paused, thought for a moment. Avenge me, it said again more hesitantly. Come now, Captain Roberts. I leaned up against the porch column. Who killed you? You must remember, surely. The ghost cleared its throat. It was dark. I can't help it. I found that whole dialogue between the ghost and Hawkins just really good. It's very funny and it just goes on. It gets more ridiculous because obviously Hawkins knows it's not a ghost. On page 255 to 257, you start to learn a bit more about Kitty's past. Now, Kitty is kind of adopted by Fleet, who is the main suspect in this murder. He was Robert's roommate. He's generally a very dark and grey character, very funny. I adore Fleet. He is her new father figure after her father had died. And on this page, you definitely start to learn that Fleet was actually in a relationship with Kitty's father. And that is why he has taken on the parental role of this girl, even though they're not blood related. On page 267, I have a fantastic quote which just describes Fleet perfectly. Now this is after the pasta has been stabbed in the Marshall Sea. They don't know who's done it. And this is Fleet's reaction. In truth, I had never seen him so cheerful. The chaos of the riot and the puzzle of Woodburn stabbing were like whores arriving at once on Christmas day. The only problem being he wasn't sure which one to fondle first. I just find that's a fantastic way to describe how happy Fleet is that someone else has been stabbed so that he gets to work out who did it. So I adore the relationship between Hawkins and Fleet. They become so much like best friends. At one point, Fleet is yelling out the window, get those calves up here because Hawkins is apparently known for having nice legs, which Fleet has definitely clocked onto. And I just find it so fun and open and honest that this guy's just yelling out of a window to get this young guy's nice calves up to his bedroom. But as this is a spoiler section, Fleet is killed. Now. Before he is killed, he actually sends a letter to his brother. Now his brother is outside of the Marshall Sea, he's also involved in the underground, dirtier side of London, and he has a fantastic way that Fleet describes Hawkins. So in the letter it says, Here follow my conclusions after three days of close study. This is where Fleet is studying Hawkins. He is a man of instinct more than reason. He is drawn in trouble, or perhaps it is fair to say trouble is drawn to him. He believes at heart that God will protect him. An unfortunate recipe for disaster, you will agree, but it is the last point I fear the most. A man of true faith in this city is like a naked man running into battle, believing himself fully armed, diverting and alarming in, in equal measure. In other circumstances, I would propose we shipwreck him upon a remote island like Robertson Crusoe before he does himself an injury. But here is the strangest truth of all. I would miss him. He has awoken me from myself, James, awoken me from a deep slumber. I'm not sure how or why, but there it is. Perhaps it is his youth, his curiosity, I suspect it may be his legs. Again, I just love the honesty in there. I love Fleet. Now, at the end, because this book all the way through, as I said, is my comfort zone, it has every way that it could turn cliche at the end, but it doesn't. I'm not gonna tell you the end, and even though this is in the spoiler-free section, but just gonna say it's refreshing. Welcome back if you've joined me after the spoilers for my overall view of this book. Ultimately, read it. It's awesome. I couldn't put it down. I read it so quickly. Antonia Hodgson is a fantastic writer. Her characterization is superb, especially considering a vast majority of this novel takes place in one prison, which is only one, like two courtyards, the rich people's places to sleep and the poorer people's places to sleep. That's it. They venture out of the prison like three times in the entire book. Very interesting, very well written, very funny. I didn't guess who did it, so let's see if you guys can. Ultimately, I would give this book 10 out of 10 stars. Read it, fun read, I loved it. And thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this review. 
If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you like to see since I upload, click that little bell down below. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or Tumblr. I post general bookish pictures, as well as my writing tips and unboxings on there. And thanks for watching, guys. Bye.